Marketing and Salutations. It is Tuesday, November 18th, and let's talk garrisons. So, um, basically what happens is, whether you're Horde or Alliance, you do a small question, you go through the Dark Portal, you screw with the Iron Horde's plans, and then you start up your base. Now, Alliance, your base is here. Um, it is called Lunarfell. This is what the, it just says garrison, but it, the actual zone is called Lunarfell. Um, Horde, you start in Frostfire Ridge, and your starting place is right here, I believe. Yes, right here. And um, it is called... I know this. I know this. I swear I know this. Okay, hold on. Nope. It's, it's gone, and my head is completely blank because I'm not anywhere nearly awake yet. So we will go to wowhead.com and click on their garrison guide. And... Okay, where are we here? Mm hmm How many pages do I have to go through? Okay. So, Horde, your area is called What is your area called? Frostwall. There we go. Okay, it's called Frostwall. I'm so sorry. Okay, so um, let's go back to here. So it's called Frostwall. It is here. I'm pretty sure it's either here or here, but I'm fairly certain that it's here. Um, so oh, I'm sorry. I am very much not awake yet. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to do your few opening quests, and then eventually you will get a very basic um, garrison. It's, it's quite small. You don't have any of this yet. And that's a level one. And you're going with level one, you get one small building and one large building. So let's go look at the buildings quickly. Um, sorry, I, I just upgraded my garrison last night at like two in the morning, so I'm not exactly sure where everything is still. Okay, so you get one small building. Um, your options are pretty limited. I have all of them unlocked, but you are guaranteed to have the storehouse you get the storehouse for sure to start and the large one you have to have the barracks you can now you can change and delete these whenever you like um they all have their different options we'll go over quickly what each of them are but uh level one they're all pretty basic um barracks essentially lets you do uh patrol missions um and then when it's level two it has bodyguard for all but like i said we'll do that later so you can see we have all of these options. So you start off with your big plot, your big plot, which is your barracks, and a small plot, which I did. Did I do tailoring or did I do storehouse? I did one of them. Anyway, so you end up with one of them. And then, can I put something here yet? Yes, I can. Let's add the pleasure bar. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Sorry. Um, so, what you're going to do is you'll get those and then eventually you'll get a quest to level up your town hall. Now mine's my town hall is level three, that's the max that anything goes. So you start at level one and then you eventually get a quest to upgrade it to level two, it's not very expensive. Level three is crazy expensive, um, in my opinion. Um, so what you're gonna do is you will do whatever quest they ask you to do and you will level it up to level two and that will net you another small building, which is where I get, I chose either the storehouse or the tailoring emporium. Um, you will also get a medium building and the medium one that I chose was the trading post. Um, and then level three, you unlock a third small one, a second medium, and a second large. Um, and then those are these are all the ones that can be kind of like specified. So these are all the possible large ones. These are the possible medium ones. These are the possible small ones. So let's go through them quickly. So barracks at level one, um, you can see I have someone working. Some of them you can have a follower working. They have to have various different um, capabilities depending on the followers. We'll talk about followers in a second. Um, so you can get patrol missions. You will get a level two lets you have a follower um, come with you as a bodyguard and will help you fight. Level three increases your follower limit to five and grants access to racial guards and banners. And this is what I can't wait for. Um, now the reason 
that um, you want your follow li follower limit increase is that you normally have a cap of 20, but you will get a lot of um, missions essentially. And again, I'll, I'll go over this in more detail later, but what you want is you can only have 20 active. So even if you have more, you have to deactivate them and it costs money to reactivate them. Uh, and then Dwarven Bunker, it doubles your chance for uh, quest rewards to get a rare epic bonus upgrade. So when, I didn't talk about this yesterday when leveling, when you are questing and you get, let's say you get a green, you have a chance for it to be upgraded um, to rare or epic. Uh, more for rare if it's going to green and then obviously you can't go back to green if it's blue. But you have a chance, it's not common, it's pretty rare, but uh, you have a chance for it to get upgraded, which means the eye level goes up and the uh, stats go up, eye level is item level, by the way. Um, and the stats go up, so it's ha it, you can get a green to an ep a green to a rare, or very rarely, I believe, you can get a green to an epic, and you can get blues to epics as well. So dwarven bunker at level one doubles your chances, and you can also um, al it allows the collection of armor scraps from the orc clans of Draenor, so all the iron horde guys that we're fighting, um, for armor transmogrification use. Level two, you can do opens up work orders to get follower weapons and armor in exchange for a garrison. You can also gear up your um, followers and you get new armor transmog items. And level three, grant one of your three seals of tempered fate at no cost. So you get a, each week you get an extra bonus roll essentially. Or no, you each week you only have to buy two, I guess. Or you don't, or you get an extra, you, you have a minimum two and you get an extra one or something, I don't know. Okay, so on Noish Gearworks, uh, you unlock a, Sorry, no much gear works. Uh, you get a powerful engineer that creates a new invention every day, and it can be something completely cosmetic. I think it can also be something kind of useful. Um, level two, they gain access to five new and amazing devices. I don't know what they are exactly. You'll have to look them up. Uh, and I would definitely recommend Wowhead for all of your garrison needs. There, on the front page of Wowhead, there is a humongous post about everything garrison. It's really, really great. That's where I got a lot of my information. And then level three allows the creation of a siege vehicle once per day, um, which you can use to invade other garrisons, which is something that you can do. I don't know how you do it exactly. Uh, Mage Tower allows the collection of ogre waystones, which can be used to power an ogre gate of your choice on Draenor. I don't know what that does. Um, you unlock a second ogre wigget and then a third ogre wigget. So I'm assuming that lets you just kind of, yeah, so it, it, okay, so enables instant travel to strategic points in Draenor. So that's pretty handy. Um, and then stables. It allows the capture and training of special mounts and also allows you to remain mounted while interacting with objects in outdoor drainer zones. So it basically gives you the what, um, not the combat portion, but what the Talbot gives you in the Grand, um, where you can loot stuff, interact with stuff and whatever. Um, it lets you do that and everywhere. Um, level two, you no longer get dazed by enemies while riding mounts in outdoor drainer zones. And then level three, increases your mount speed by 20% in drowner, which is pretty cool considering we can't fly right now. Okay, so medium. Uh, trading post, so you get a merchant shows up each day to sell trading goods um, and it uh, a different merchant will show up every day, which is kind of cool. And then it also allows you the trade of crafting reagents for garrison resources. So resources you need to upgrade things, you need them to go on missions but it what the trading post makes you trade in for garrison resources for work orders every day changes every day which is awesome in my opinion um because if you when you get some of the other buildings that we're going to talk about um, you're going to have a constant influx of resources that you might not use so it's really great to have a way to instead of just selling them for money you actually get like resources for them which you know if you prefer money then by all means um level two grants access to the shatari defense or the laughing skull factions and unlocks the ability to access parts to acquire parts from around Draenor to build an auctioneer. And in level three, you gain your reputation gain in Draenor increases by 20%, which is why I'm keeping this one, especially on this character. Um, your barn allows, this is really useful if you are a tailor or a leather worker. Um, you allows you to capture cleft hoof, elect wolves, and talbuck for leather and fur, which helps you um, do leather working and tailoring recipes. At level two, um, you capture boars and river beasts for the rare meats that are used to create the food for cooking. And at level three, it allows you to collect elite beasts for savage blood, which is you need it to harv to make um, all of your epic crafted armor and weapons. Um, so blacksmithing, leatherworking, tailoring. Um, I imagine that is it. 
Okay, and Gladiator Sanctum. Sorry, this was the barn. That's what it looks like. Gladiator Sanctum. Um, this is for PvP. If you are very PvP focused, this is a good idea. Um, so it increases your out of combat regen and outdoor zones and allows the collection of broken bones, which you use for Conqueror's Tribute, which I assume is a daily or a work order type thing. Um, it enables safe fall and underwater breathing in outdoor general zones, and enables the Nemesis Quest, which is a series for defeating enemy players of specific races, and there are achievements for all of them. And level 3, when you're below 35% life, all damage is reduced by 50% outdoors, and it allows you access to the Highmall Coliseum Gladiator Tournament. Again, this is pretty much entirely PvP stuff. My husband is just crazy about this. Okay, Lumber Mill allows you to get timber which you convert into garrison supplies. So if you're starting out, apparently the ones to grab um, are the trading post and the lumber mill if you want to just like farm resources. I, however, I'm not doing that because um, I'm going for the inn for my second medium building. So level one, each every day you get a visitor offering a dungeon. Well, you guys can read it, I know, but I'm just reading it anyway. Um, so you get rewards, you can get um, so random dungeon quest. They're not always heroic either, which is great. Um, level two, you get you can get new followers, and level three, you get the treasure hunter missions, which I am really excited about. There's an achievement to do them, of course. But anyway, and then the small buildings. So there is one. So the tannery is for leatherworking. The forge is for black. Excuse me, it's for blacksmithing. The salve, the scribes' quarters is for inscription. The gem boutique is for jewel crafting. Engineering works for engineering. Enchanter study. Um, is for enchanting the alchemy lab is for alchemy, pardon me, and the tailoring emporium is for tailoring. Um, I know, never would have guessed, right? And then there are two other ones that are non that are not related. Um, so I took tailoring, um, but basically what they do, level one allows you to produce whatever your base item is. So for me, it's hex, it's uh, hex weave. For enchanting, it would be. Um, it could be any of the materials, including the temporal crystal, I believe. Um, so you get to do work orders. So you, for tailoring, I'm turning in um, the sumptuous fur, which is like the new basic material for leatherworking and tailoring. You mix it with stuff to get hex weight, which is really weird. Um, and uh, it allows you to turn that in to get hex weave as well as making it yourself. Um, alchemy, I, I'm assuming you just turn in herbs to get alchemy stuff and so on and so forth. Um, and then the other two, Oh, sorry, for level two, um, uh, if you have a follower that has the trait for that profession, you can make it work there, which grants some type of bonus. It varies on each one. I'm not going to go through each of them, and that allows more work orders to be done. And level three, it allows even more work orders to be done. So normally the work orders cap out at 19. Um, profession ones start at 14, and uh, level three, it ups it to 21, which is pretty handy if you have a lot of the materials. Okay, so the other two are storehouse, which is what I do. So level one allows you to get access to your bank and it increases the total, okay, so everything starts at 14, sorry, and then increases the total number of active work orders for all of your buildings by five, which gets you up to 19. Um, and then level two, you get access to your guild bank. Level three, you get access to an ethereal trader for void storage and transmog and increases the total number of active work orders for all buildings by 15. So you will go from 14 to 29, which is pretty freaking awesome. Actually, this one, this one might take me to 36. I'm not sure yet if that stacks. We will find out. And the other one is a salvage jar, which I don't have yet, which I'm building next. Um, but as you can see, I have eight resources, so I'm a little lacking. Um, so you can collect salvage, which you can turn, um, which you can, I think you can turn into garrison resources, and then eventually you can discover items from it. So there's just random stuff that you can get, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can discover follower items once you get it to level two. So that's that. That's how you build this. Now you will notice there are a couple plots I did not talk about. So there are f at level, when you get a level one garrison, you don't get anything special. When you get a level two garrison, you will be able to unlock the fishing shack, which allows you, so it allows small fish to be caught at level one and you can get fishing dailies. Level two allows medium fish to be caught and then enormous. So this is how cooking and stuff works now in fishing. You collect, you can either collect 20 small fish, you can collect 10 medium fish and then you fillet them um, and they create the flesh which you can use in cooking or in first aid or in alchemy. Um, and then if you, the enormous one you only need to catch five. So I am so excited to be almost there. 
and it also grants you a chance to catch a unique fish that can be used to lure mysterious creatures onto the shore. I don't know what that does yet, because I'm not there yet. You will get a mine. So mine is called the Lunar Fall Excavation. I believe the Frost, well, the Horde one is called Frostfire Excavation. So you can get Drenai, Drenic, sorry, Drenic Stone, and you use them to do uh, work orders to get either, you can get either Black Rock or the new one, or True Iron Ore. Um, and then at level two, you can let miners with a follower trait to work there, and it opens up a additional mine shaft and increases your work orders. And then level three, you get a third one, and then garrison guards patrol the mine, keeping out, keeping it clear of hostile gore. Oh, that's nice. So sometimes when you click stuff, when you uh, mine stuff, or when you collect herbs in the herb garden, which we'll get to in a second, these gore can cop out. They're like the kobolds of Jernor, essentially. Um, and they'll drop items, but they're kind of annoying. So uh, I guess if you have guards, they, will, they won't have any. So that's nice. The herb garden you will get at level two also. So you get random herbs in all these different nodes in the garden. And um, you use them to get seeds. And seeds you can use to get a whole bunch of different things. There's a pet that you can get for a thousand. Guess what I'm going for right now. And then level three, you can grow a unique tree that grants food buffs. And then the last one is the pet menagerie, which you can only get once your garrison is level three, and it has to do, um, it just has to do, you just have to get to level three, you do a little quest, um, and then you let, f so five of your battle pets just kind of hang out around the area, which is pretty cool. Um, it increases your trap chance, oh my god, yes, finally, and reduces the cooldown of our five battle pets while in Draenor, yes! And up to 10 of your pets when they hang out around there. And in level 3, it unlocks a pet battle daily with unique pet awards. Um, so yeah, that's it for those. And the only other thing we're going to talk about quickly, so th this is the architect, garrison architects. This is where you, so you can take it and you can slide to where you want it. You can slide over top of others and get rid of stuff. Um, it doesn't cost anything to redo it, which is really nice. Um, you just have to pay the new materials. And then this is your missions. So you can see I have five completed. So I'm going to just do these quickly. I probably could have done this first, I apologize. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a longer video. Oh, hey, I got the achievement. Complete 100 garrison missions. Yay! Oh, God, I need those resources so badly. Alright, so that one didn't work, so I don't get the bonus rewards. This one, yes, and this one. No, didn't get it. Shucks. Oh, this one will go. Okay, so how this works is, right now I have none in progress, but I have 16 available. So you can see they all have levels. So when you are playing throughout the game, you will do quests, you will get achievements, you will do something, and you will get followers. These are all the followers that I have. You can see some of them are, so I had to make her inactive because I had too many, because I have 21. These two are working in things, but these are all of my followers. Aren't they lovely? So you can, most of them will default to green, sometimes you can upgrade them to blue or to rare or epic. Um, and then once you level them um, to 100, this one's green, so he still has experience. Um, because I can upgrade, he will eventually level up to blue and then to purple. And so he has mining, so I could, once I get my mine high enough, I could actually, I could actually do that now, I could assign him to the mine. Maybe I'll do that. And he allows just for extra stuff. So if you go to your mine, there, I can add a follower. That's I do. So we click on him, and he goes. Can I add anything to you? No. Can I add anyone to you? Yes. Let's add you. What about you? You already have someone? No, 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 no. Okay, so we're good. So, how this works. You will go to your missions. And I don't want to do my level 100 ones right now, so... Let's go down here. So I have a level 91. Oh, that's nice. So I'm gonna, I wanna, I, basically I wanna put the lowest possible one in there so that they level up. Um, that's kind of how I like to do it. So we'll do this, start mission. I need garrison resources. So let's do this one. Another shadow or paid one. Well, yeah, that's gonna have to do. And here's another one. Okay, and does anybody have this? What is this? Group damage. Well, let's put you here, because you, no, that's not going to work. You, 67, 45, okay, 67% is the best we can do, so let's do that. And this is essentially all that you're going to do. 82%, I will take it. Uh, yeah, so this is what it looks like.
Um, the other thing to note is that if someone, if a follower is too low of a level, um, they will not get experience even if you pass it. So try and only keep them within about a level of what the level of the quest is. Um, otherwise you're just asking for a bad time. And let's do 45, 53. No, not doing that yet. What about you? No, I don't have anyone. It's getting too high already. Okay, so we're going to stop there. So you can see, they can. it'll say how long they have. So I have a 28 one. I had a 30 minute one, two, five, two 45 minute ones, one hour one, and one 10 hour long one. But I should be getting some resources in a little bit. So this is essentially what the garrison looks like. It's pretty cool. This is a level three town hall, so this is going to be a little different than what you're going to start out with. And you can see the walls are, they're all pretty now and stuff. Um, so in terms of work orders, we're going to go over them really quickly because I'm, I've been talking way too long. So how many, oh, I just got 60. Nice. Okay. So how this works is trade orders. So this is, sorry, this is the new trader. So she's selling all of this for 40. So it varies each day. Prices vary depending on the trader. You can use savage blood to buy gold. You can use resources to buy gold. You can buy meat. You can buy uh, random crafting mats. And then what is on sale today? Ooh, the Talador orchids. Okay, I will start two work orders then. So this guy, I can only have 12 queued up at a time because he's, they are only level one. So I will have to work on leveling up my guys. And you can see I've got all these little dots on my screen. Those are work orders. So I have, a ta I have my tailoring ones here, and now I can talk to Hello. my merchant, and I can do that. Have a good so this is what, what this is where you buy all of your stuff, essentially. And then here you can see I stuck my pleasure bot 8000 in my tailoring emporium, so he allows me to make fearsome battle standards. So it lasts a minute, or until destroyed, and it places one to strike fear as long as it stands enemies within eight yards will take five thousand damage every three seconds. This is the storehouse worth the guild bank and the regular bank. Oh and the other thing to note is every hour or so um, your garrison cash will refill. So and it just kind of whenever you click on it, it just kind of rounds to wherever in the hour you are. So that's something that to make sure you know every time you go back to your garrison, just go and pick it up. And I really need to, so I've got this big empty spire. This is what your whole area will look like until you build stuff. So it just looks like that. So this is the herb garden. So even though I don't have herbalism, I can pick the herbs. And so you get the seeds. And that's how that works. And I will just show you the other two, the other ones quickly. Uh, this is not a very quick episode, I apologize, but garrisons are kind of crazy. This is what the mine looks like. Hold on, I've got, oh, I'll look at that later, that's fine. And you just kind of run down in here, and you mine. So two things to click on here. There are nodes and there are actual mine carts. Let's see if we can find one. There's one. Okay, so the mine carts will have any number of things, really. There's like, there's. Sky is the limit. So I got some primal. I got a primal spirit. I got ore. I got miner's coffee. I got a gray. And I got some archaeology fragments. Oh, here's one. There's one right here. This one gave me three primal spirit. And there's different items. So you can see I've got miner's coffee and a preserved archaeology pick. So the pick allows you to mine faster in the mines. And the. Um, coffee gives you a quicker run speed in the mine and only works in your mine and oh I am out of there stop that okay and this is what are you I don't recognize you Open for business. interesting okay so Stay just a new thing oh these are uh, trading dummies nice healer training Damage and tanking. That's pretty sweet. Okay. I haven't seen this yet. This is new. Oh, it's the Tower of War. Oh, I think this means you can do invasions now. I'm assuming that's what it means. It's a very tall tower. Is there anybody up here? Oh, okay. There's a portal to a shrine. Okay, so there's the portal to, uh, I'm assuming your city, which is Storm Shield if you are Alliance and War Spear if you are Horde. Um, these are basically like the new shrines. They're 
are auctioneers, there are bankers, there are, um, if you don't pick your building, your, one of your profession buildings in your garrison, you can get all of your stuff there. This is what the fishing looks like. Let's grab the daily. And then the last one I will show you um, will be the pet menagerie, which I just got last night. Oh, I stayed up way too late, but I was so excited I had to. Um, and the good news is upgrading your town, upgrading your buildings takes about an hour, or building a building takes about an hour. Um, upgrading them takes no, uh, upgrading your town hall takes no time at all. Oh, good, okay. This is what the pet one looks like. So you can see I have my hopling, my amber moth, I've got a dark moon zeppelin. What? This okay, so this thing I don't know what it does yet, but you click on it and he just kind of follows you around for a while. I don't know why, but okay. And then I have my stinker and I have my jumping, my jumping spider, which is one of my favorites. It just picks five random ones each day. All right, and that is it for today, guys. So that was a very long video. How long have I been talking? I'm a little scared to look. Oh my god, I've been talking for half an hour. Oh god, I am so sorry. But that is pretty much everything you need to know about garrisons. As always, you can leave questions down below if I missed something or I didn't answer something. I'll either I'll ask them in the comments and I'll probably mention them again tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, we're going to talk professions. And it, by professions, I mean... Prof I'll give a generalization of your secondary ones, but your primary ones I'll probably go into more depth. Um, but yeah. That is it. Thank you so much for watching. Again, sorry it was so long-winded. Uh, like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Have a beautiful day.